week one, day five, shoulders and upper body to round out the last day of our first week of strength emphasis. This is a day where you'll definitely see some more core specific work mixed in as we can really burn out the arms in weight bearing exercises while adding a core challenge too. Today's workout is three circuits. The first two are three times through. The third one is two times through. As always, 40 seconds of work for our timers, 20 seconds of rest. Equipment you're going to need is your long resistance band anchored to something sturdy. Two sets of weights, so I'd go a little bit lighter, anywhere three to eight max, and then heavier 10, 12, 15s, and a Pilates ball. Doing the workout along with you today, I have Hannah and I have Jackie. They are gonna come on in as we get into our warm up, which is four movements, one time through total. So you're gonna grab your long resistance band for the first one. Place it between your hands and hold your arms out long. We're just gonna do some banded pull apart. So we're gonna start to warm up the shoulders. Exhale as you pull apart. Inhale, controlled release. So make sure you find your ear, shoulder, hip alignment. Warming up our core strategy, exhale, you pull in, ribs stay down as the arms pull apart and those shoulder blades squeeze together. So shoulders aren't coming up the back, just getting some nice upper body blood flowing before we get into our shoulder emphasis. Let's do two more of those. And then we're gonna take our band and we're gonna put it around our back, just at the base of our shoulder blades. We're gonna inhale, exhale, press. Soft inhale into the back, really expand. So posterior expansion, you've seen these so many times. What was once our working movement is now a quick warm up. Just inviting us to remember that we need to find that back body breathing. And as we add more strength, like we did earlier this week for back day, making sure we don't create any residual tightness to minimize our rib cage expansion. Let's go ahead and do two more of those. Inhale, really press that band away. Last one. All right, go ahead and drop your band. We are just gonna cross the arm across the body. Just a few breaths here, warming up through the back of the shoulder. Back body, go ahead and switch. Cross the arm. Nice deep breaths. Good, go ahead and release that. Let's come down to the ground. We're gonna do thread the needle before we get into our first circuit. Reach your right fingertips up toward the ceiling, gaze up, exhale, thread the needle, forehead and shoulder to the mat. So upper body rotation, and we can breathe into the pelvic floor here. Still creating length. Slowly unwind, come back to hands and knees. Reach your left fingertips up toward the ceiling and then switch, thread the needle opposite side. Three breaths here. Breathe into the side we're rotating away from. And slowly come out of that. Let's get into our first circuit. It is three times through. Remember, the emphasis in this phase is to go heavier with our weight. So I'm gonna show you exactly what to expect. You're gonna need your heavier set and your lighter set. We're gonna do a shoulder press. So weights are racked at the shoulders. We've done these with lighter load. I'm gonna have my core on. So I'm pushing that load away. Soft inhale, exhale, draw in more. As I press away, ribs stay down. So make sure as you press, we're not bringing the chest forward and those ribs aren't coming up. So it needs to be a manageable weight that you can control for that press. Then you'll grab your lighter set of weights. Actually, sorry, you're gonna keep your heavier ones. We're gonna do an upright row. So palms are turning to face the body. Everything's the same mechanics with breathing and alignment, we're just adding a new movement. So at the bottom, inhale, exhale, zip as you row up. Now you can either exhale through the entire movement and reset at the bottom, or you can exhale to lift, inhale to lower. 
Then you're going to need your band. And we have two options for you. One, I want you to have it anchored low for the more advanced option. And we're going to take a tall seat. You're going to grab the band in your five fingertips. And we're going to do banded face pull. So here the core is on. I'm going to exhale more as I drive those fingertips as if I was pulling straight to my forehead and then release. So at this back portion, you should feel the shoulder blades squeezing together and those rear delts. This is more core heavy work. To minimize that, you have the option to come up, anchor your band high and just do a standing face pull. Everything is the same with the breath, exhale as we pull apart. On our exertion phase, it's just whether you're up for that increased core challenge for this circuit. Or maybe halfway through, you switch to the standing one. Couple options to always work. So let's get into it. I'll let Jackie come back, grab her weights. Heavy shoulder press is first. We're gonna get started. Make sure you find your ear, shoulder, hip. And exhale, press away. Inhale, controlled release. Exhale, zip the core. Control release. So you're holding on to core tension. We're going heavier with weights. So you should start to feel why that core needs to be on the heavier you go. And create more stability the heavier load we push away from our bodies. So they're both doing a great job of keeping their neck neutral. Make sure you're not reaching the neck forward to also compensate for trying to push weight overhead. We've got three, two, one, quick break. Keep those heavier weights for your upright row. So when you row up, we're coming just to shoulder height, no higher. Those hands won't come that high. So elbows to shoulder height. Same alignment cues. And go ahead and row. So I think Jackie's got 10s, Hannah's pulling 15s. Those are about really appropriate, good challenging weights from where we previously were for increasing your tolerance. You can't go super heavy on shoulders. My max is 20, 25. So both working in a really great range. Row up, feel the top of the shoulder squeeze when you feel your full exhale. So mind-body connection in our strength movements as well. Make sure you feel that muscle at the top of the movement. All right, we are gonna come into our banded face pulls. Hannah's gonna show you the standing option. Jackie's gonna take the tall seat. We've got six seconds. Go ahead, exhale, get the core on, soft inhale, exhale as you pull, good, controlled release. So remember that band's always gonna wanna fly back. We need to slowly release with the shoulder muscles and as our core inhales, that controlled release as well that we've worked on. So nice squeeze happening right at the back. Exhale as you pull and draw in. Ribs stay down. You really can isolate the muscles when we keep the core in stability. So that's why our core stability training was so important to learn and understand. All right, we're coming back to our press. Remember, this is three times through. Try to stick with the same weight. Your last three to five reps should be challenging, but doable. All right, press, lower on your inhale. So Jackie's doing a great job keeping that alignment. There's no other accessory movement happening. So just be mindful of that when we're doing a standing press like this. It's really easy to get just a little bit of body momentum from the feet to get those weights up and overhead. Good, nice drawing in. Hannah's doing a good job. Remember those last three to five should feel a little sticky to get that weight up. All right, drop the weights, shake them out. Upright row is next. 
get to work in 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Up and controlled lower. So again, you can exhale through the entirety if you need to, because in order to lower a weight with control, sometimes we might, might need to be exhaling through the entirety. It's always up to you and where you're at in your progression. But because we're not doing total body movements, we can generate all of our energy towards these heavier focused lifts and really prioritize those muscles without fatiguing the entirety of the body. All right, banded face pulls. So shoulders are my absolute favorite for adding in a little bit of extra core work for reasons like this. We can do the same movement, add a tall seat, and then we incorporate that core challenge even more. Now, if you were going super heavy with a way heavier band or with a cable machine at the gym, then I would defer to standing because the number one goal is prioritizing the shoulder strength and less of everything else. So always keeping in mind that's how we kind of mix and move a lot of these options in. Previously, we did squat to press. We did a kneeling hip extension to press that wasn't prioritizing only our shoulder strength as opposed to today with these very single but heavier movements. Nice job. One more time through. So hopefully by now you are feeling that fatigue of those muscles in the shoulder press. This last set should be challenging for you. If it's not, if you can change your weights, try to increase them on the last one or going forward the next time we come to shoulder day, keep that in mind that this last set should be challenging for you. That way you know you've selected the right amount of weight. So there's no other way other than your own trial and error of picking up the weight and seeing how you tolerate. But if you're feeling too good and it's too easy at the end, that means we can go a little bit heavier with those weights. We've got six seconds, see if we can squeak maybe two more out. Nice controlled breath, even as you're fatiguing with your alignment. Okay, shake it out, upright row. Hannah's just so anxious to get rid of those weights. <laughs> Every time she turns around, can I? Nope, nope, not yet. <laughs> Last time on this one though. We've got three, two, and one. Exhale, draw the weight up. Option to exhale through the entirety or inhale to lower. So always coming back to our breathing. Don't forget about that as we add this in. We should have solidified that strategy at this point. But it gets easy to get lost in movement, so I'm always just gonna call you back to remembering those things. That's how we always include our pelvic floor in our daily strength training. Good, lift up, squeeze at the top. All right, face pulls one last time. Nice neutral alignment, neck is in line. Same on Jackie. And pull, draw the core in as the arms move away. So, we always pushed how long we could hold our exhale. This is the same in the movement like this with strength. Can you hold back for that full exhale? And then when you feel that inhale coming, go ahead and release it. So making sure you're feeling that squeeze, that connection. Just like we fostered mind-body connection with all of our other movements, hopefully those neural pathways are already fired and you can feel those muscles because we've targeted them before and now we can really isolate for strength.
All right, circuit one is done. We're gonna come into circuit two. You're gonna need your little bit lighter weights for the rest of these movements and your Pilates ball. So we've got four movements three times through. We're gonna do a lateral raise. You've done these, we've done them seated. We're gonna do them standing. And if you can increase your weight from what you've done before, anywhere from five to eight, 10 would be a max. So palms are down. We exhale as we draw up and then lower the weights down. Option is to exhale. Or inhale, exhale. You're gonna be able to get more repetitions in when you lower on your inhale, but of course, always prioritize your strategy here first. I wanna show you a side view. It's not completely out to the side with a lateral raise. There's a little bit of a 45 degree angle, slight bend in the elbows. Then we're gonna take our break. We're gonna come into a front raise, which you've done before as well. So thumbs are facing up. Everything's the same, exhale. Option to exhale through the entirety or Inhale to lower. Make sure as those weights come up, because this can be challenging, that you don't shift back with your weight or thrust the ribs forward. Then we're gonna flip our palms up. We're gonna hold our elbows as if we were gonna do a bicep curl. And we're gonna inhale at the bottom, exhale, draw in. As the weights come overhead, tap, inhale, exhale. So nice and controlled, I'm not lifting here. The shoulders are staying anchored down as we facilitate this overhead movement with control. That's your third movement. Then you're gonna grab your Pilates ball where you're gonna do a partial sit up. So we've been working these a lot. We haven't added any change here, just throwing in a little bit of core work. Inhale here, exhale, draw in. Inhale, reset, exhale, draw in. You can always change your range of motion. You don't have to go all the way down here. You can work a partial range, making sure you're firing up the core, always drawing in first before you sit up. That is circuit number two, it's three times through. So I'm gonna let you select your weights. Jackie and Hannah are gonna do the same. So remember those lighter weights, five, eight, maybe 10 max on the lateral raise, and we're gonna get to work, 40 seconds. Slight 45 degree angle, slight bend in the elbows. Really feel the top of the shoulder squeeze. And then controlled release. So your weight training should still be slow. We don't need to increase the speed at all. We do too much of that, we use momentum and we're not actually feeling that muscle work. Three more seconds. All right, take a break, shake it out, then we come in to the front raise. So we're just targeting all the muscles around the shoulder. Our first two circuits are very strength heavy and isolated. Our body weight fatigue comes in in our third circuit with our weight bearing exercises. Three, two, thumbs up, lift up to shoulder height and lower. So. Again, reminder, just pay attention. You're not rocking back. We're staying solid through the feet. Core is locked in. The only thing moving is the shoulders. So again, very similar to our leg day today is structured the same. You wanna hit your heavy lifts first with those isolated movements. So that's our press, our row, our raises, and then we can fatigue our accessory muscles a little bit more at the end. You always wanna divert your energy first too making sure you can get through these heavier loads and then lighter loads at the end, more accessory. All right, quick break. And then that's it around the world. Thumbs are, palms are facing up. We come up and overhead with control. We've got four more seconds. Three, two, Draw up and in, anchor the ribs down, anchor the shoulders in place as the arms come overhead with that exhale. Nice, Hannah, good job. Exhale, inhale, controlled release. Still getting expansion, core is still on. 
So breathing with core tension. We've done this since about day one, learning what that feels like and progress that. So you should be able to breathe into your diaphragm with confidence when we do these movements. All right, partial sit up with the ball. You can always go back to our very first iteration of this with the band at the wall and the ball, depending on how you've been progressing, but just decrease your range of motion if you need to. You can always gaze down as you're coming up. Is your midline coming out? And you can put a fingertips there too. You can feel that if you're not able to see it and get that feedback as well. That if you feel the belly pushing out or not maintaining our pressure, I would decrease my range of motion. I would exhale more forcefully to really emphasize that curl up with control. Nice exhale on Hannah. Jackie's feeling her midline. Always bring back your beginning tools. These are always helpful. All right, lateral raise. We start from the top. Grab your weights, make any change in your weights if you need to, up or down, depending on how you did the first time around. And three, two, one, exhale. Lift and controlled lower. So the core is definitely working on that controlled lower with that inhale. That weight's far away from our body. And other than our shoulders, the only thing helping with that is our core to lower with control. Feel the muscle squeeze at the top. Always have to know we're squeezing and working the muscles that we're targeting. If you don't feel that, you're not going to get as good of a result from the workout. All right, ladder front raises are next. We just did our lateral raises, so thumbs up. If you've ever felt shoulder pinching when you've tried to do these and you've had palms down, thumbs up, rotates the head of the humerus, makes it easier. But we wanna have that nice upright posture to prevent any of that from happening as well. So we're not rounded forward, we're not overly proud. Ear, shoulder, hip. All three corners of the foot. Exhale. Keep checking in on those alignment cues. Nice, Jackie. You can see that full range she's getting at the top. See, that's the hardest part of the movement. She's doing a good job managing that. No rocking back. All righty, around the world, flip the palms. Got 20 seconds before we get there. Remember, shoulder blades are staying down, so really pay attention if you're trying to compensate with those traps, lifting the arms up and overhead. That exhale is gonna help minimize that. Keep the ribs down, core tension is on. So those light weights start to feel real heavy real quickly when we're minimizing any accessory movement. So make sure you're not slightly leaning back too. It's a real easy one to just get that slight bit of movement to make it feel a little easier. We've got 10 seconds. Let's see if we can get three more reps overhead. Neck is neutral, control. All right, partial sit up with the Pilates ball. Just behind the small of your back. Exhale, core is on. Now the hardest part in this movement is from that full extension back. Really try to drive your exhale at that point. So that's that long, slow exhale coming into play in a movement like this. 
you slowly titrate how much you need of that core support. So maybe it's a slow, steady one at first, and then you really drive that exhale to drive up through the second half of this partial sit-up phase. Always coming back to, can you visualize? Can you see? Can you put hands on your body to feel what's happening at the core? All right, one more time through. We've got our lateral raises, front raises around the world. So this entire last time through should be challenging at this point, especially since we already did our first circuit with a heavier load. So lat raise, 45 degrees. Really watch your tendency to use momentum and those form changes in this last time through. I'll constantly remind you of those things because our body will take the route of re least resistance when it can and we don't even always notice it happening. Lots to always think about. Nice breathing. First lift, exhale. All right, quick break. Front raises, thumbs are up. One last time. So ear, shoulder, hip, you're starting to fatigue. Find those things, find your foot. Inhale, exhale your core is on. And then soft inhales and exhales through this next 40 seconds of the movement. Unclench your jaw if you're straining there. No leaning back. All shoulder movement. Now if you're not getting the full range of motion, you need to decrease your weight and the resistance that you're pushing. So if we can't get all the way up, then we're not gonna be sufficiently working that muscle. So always remember that as you're working through what is a reasonable load, how much can I handle more, should I handle less? It's always breathing, full range of motion, no accessory movement. All right, around the world one more time. Shoulder blades stay down, exhale, anchors the ribs as you come up and overhead. that four, three, two, one. So targeting all muscles of the head, of the muscles around the shoulder joint. If you're used to total body strengthening, this is going to feel very different for you, but you should walk away feeling like you really worked your shoulders and all the muscles and know where those muscles live. We're building muscle. Building muscle requires progressive overload and fatigue of that group that you cannot achieve in a total body movement on an ongoing basis. You need to load and overload those muscles. All right, partial sit up will wrap it up through this circuit. Again, you've done these, but you've done them in more total body movements and not three times through, so just a little progressive overload on this movement too. We work toward learning how to do a full sit-up. Now, you may never desire to do a full sit-up and that's completely fine, but I wanna make sure you have the tools should you encounter something like that. We worked the partial range of motion, the lower end, previously with our feet together and just a slight curl up. This is the top range of motion through the middle. And then we can combine what that feels like and the strength we've built there to do this whole movement. Draw in before you sit up. Gotta have that corset supporting. All right, let's get into circuit number three. It is two times through to wrap everything up. As I alluded to in the beginning, we're gonna come down to the ground. We're gonna get a lot of weight bearing to burn out the shoulder strength, which will incorporate our core. You're gonna come down to hands and knees. We're going to do a rear delt fly, thumb in, pinky out. We wanna feel that full contraction at the top of the movement. Inhale, controlled release. Remember that supporting arm isn't sinking, 
Neck is long, gazing down and forward. We do 20 seconds and then quick switch 20 seconds. There is no break in between that one. Then we are gonna try a full push-up today. We've done modified, I want you to give it a go. You're gonna come up onto your toes. Now I want you to think about when we were doing some of our plank prep where we were squeezing the knees on an exhale. Make sure you really get the legs involved. A push-up is not just the arms, but it is total body. So come up into that, exhale through the entirety of the movement. Inhale, exhale. Now you can always drop down to your knees. Maybe you only squeak out one or two full push-ups. I want you to give it a try. Another note is that the arms are not coming straight out to the side and they're also not coming straight along your body. That's triceps, about a 45 degree angle for the chest. Then we get a quick break. We finish on hands and knees for two more. It is a bear hover with an alternating shoulder tap. Exhale, inhale through here, exhale, okay? quick break, then we come back, bear hover, scap push up. So you've done these before, you haven't done them when your shoulders are completely fatigued from loading heavier weights. So this is a form of progressive overload for our final circuit. So two times through, 40 seconds of work, 20 to rest. Grab your light weight for your rear delt fly. And we will finish off this workout strong. 20 seconds, reared out fly. Anti-rotation, so nothing else is moving except for that shoulder. The core is stabilizing, then we can focus on isolating that muscle. We've got two, one, go ahead, slide the weight over, quick switch to the opposite side. This arm's feeling fatigued, make sure you press the ground away. Now we did a heavier iteration of these and a hinge movement earlier this week in our back focused work. We are throwing it in again, burn out the shoulders, focus on weight bearing and our core. All right, push up, give it a try. Hands under shoulders. Make sure you squeeze the tops of the knees so that'll straighten the legs. We'll get the quads on board to help with that pelvic stability. And see if you can exhale, draw in through the entirety of the movement. Good job, Hannah. Core up and in. You can always drop and modify. Give it a try though, see how it feels. Jackie's working nice and slow and controlled. Shoulder blades come together, press apart. You can always hop in and out of them. Maybe you do a full push-up, you do a couple modifieds, come back, try another full push-up. As long as we're getting that load, you're still gonna challenge those muscles. We've got three, two, one. Quick break, give those arms a break because you're coming back for two more weight-bearing exercises. Our taps and then our scat push-ups. You can always grab your ball if you need to. We have it nearby between the knees if you need to bring that core on board a little bit more as you are fatiguing. All right, alternating shoulder taps, working towards keeping the pelvis neutral so we don't wanna see a lot of rocking. Really draw the exhale to keep that stability. You should be feeling challenged by the end of this. This is purposely done and programmed in for this fashion. Exercises you've seen before and you did really well, how do those change when you're fatigued? That's a form of progressive overload. We've got three, two, one, quick break and then our scap push up in our bear hover. Now the option to modify is always just having the knees on the ground. Give it a try through this first time. Maybe you even do just a few reps before you set the knees down. Three, two, and one. Bear hover, scat push up. Shoulders together on the inhale. Exhale, core is in as you press away. Serratus anterior, core, weight bearing through the shoulders, ribs coming back. All of these are combining. How does that endurance come into play? 
challenging movement at the end of a heavy loaded shoulder day. But your nervous system should be on board with these because we've done them so many times. That strategy should be really amplified that you can ground down and get that weight and strength training in. Alrighty, quick break. One more time through on this one before we wrap up the end of the first week and the end of our shoulder and upper body core focus day. Rear delt fly, lightweight, thumb down, pinky up. Three, two, one. Full range of motion, make sure you're getting that squeeze. If you're not by this time around, you decrease the weight, you can just do active range of motion. Nice positioning, neck is long. Go ahead, quick switch, 20 seconds. You've got eight more. Two and one. All right, push-ups one more time. Upper body day. Quick rest. Remember that hand placement. Try for at least one. You can always modify. You can always come back to any of our previous modifications too. At the wall, elevated on a bench. It's nice that we've been able to progress from beginner to this point, because you have all of those movements in your arsenal. You know how you tolerated them. There's never just one modification. They're, they're pretty endless at this point. Nice job, not easy at the end of this day. Push through for one more repetition. And yep, you can sit those hips back. Woo, those shoulders are working. We are gonna wrap it up. You only have two more exercises. You've got it, you've got five more seconds. Get yourself ready for that bear hover alternating shoulder tap. Total body strengthening is pelvic floor fitness. Prioritizing muscle and building muscle mass is one of the most important things you can do as a female and an aging female. We lose three to 5% of our muscle mass after the decade of age 30 every decade. If we're not actively maintaining it, or building it, we're gonna to continue to see that loss and slow residual decline in that. So when we load our muscles, we load our bones, that's bone density. We also support our metabolism. Muscle strength is huge. All right, we've got four, three, two. You've only got 40 more seconds of work, scat push up. You've seen these from almost day one in any version of this scapular movement. You can do it. Really draw into that strategy, feel strong, even if you're feeling fatigued. Put all of the keys together. Core, breath, you can drop to your knees. I'm proud of Hannah for taking that modification. It's hard to take the modification sometimes when we feel like we might be doing less than. But always remember quality over quantity and you need to be doing those things that are gonna get us there. That's a good one. All right, let's wrap it up with our cool down. I'll let you stay uh, on the ground, Hannah. Jackie will come to the wall. Let's do a chest stretch. So reach your arm out, flip on over. Let those shoulders release a little bit. You can do a doorway stretch or you can do a single arm stretch like Jackie. And then release, switch, opposite arm, roll on over. And then 
come on back. Come on up to a tall position. Let's do an arm across the body stretch. This is gonna feel a little bit different than it did the first time through. Making sure we get some release, blood flow, parasympathetic state as always. Switch and release. Lots of shoulder work. That's not an easy workout that we started out with, but I know you can do it. I know you had all the tools to get there. It's just changing how we're used to moving with more weight. Go ahead and release. See if you can interlace your hands behind your low back and then keeping ribs stacked, just press away. So we'll open a little bit more through the back and the front. If you feel like you need a little bit more, you can let those arms come up and overhead as you hinge forward, bend in the knees if that's an available movement to you. So that way you're gonna double time, get some pelvic floor opening as you reach up and overhead. Breathe into the back, hinge at the hips. One more. And with that, we will wrap up the end of our first week of strength phase. I hope you're feeling strong and excited to move in to the second week where we continue to progress on our strength building.